proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ from Jefferson Free Will Baptist Church, located at 4740 Sportsman Club Road, Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, near the town of Jefferson. You can contact us at revbrad at mail.com. That's R-E-V-B-R-A-D at M-A-I-L dot com. Or write to Reverend Brad Sizemore, B-R-A-D-S-I-Z-E-M-O-R-E, Post Office Box 134, Glenrock, Pennsylvania, 17327. Now, let's hear the Word of God. You know, there are those of us sitting here, and God will say to do this, and God will say to do that. Well, I can't do that. I'm too comfortable here. That's too hard. I'm in a good place. God, would you really get me to get up and leave all of this and go out there into who knows what and face who knows what? God, you wouldn't really do that now, would you? That must be the devil trying to trick me. That must just be my idea. So I'm not going to do it because I know that God would not do that. That's what a lot of us do. We hear the voice of God and we begin to put it off on something else. We begin to put it off on somebody else. We make excuses not to do what God has told us to do. We think, well, if it's not all comfortable and every door isn't already open and the way isn't already paid, it can't be God. But most of the time it is God. Come on. I look at Abraham again. Abraham believed God when he said, In your old age you shall have a child. And because Abraham believed God, he had a child in his old age. Abraham believed God when God told him that through you I will make you a father of many nations. Through you I will bring forth a Messiah. Abraham believed God even when he said, Take your son, your only son. The only way that the things I said you are possible, I want you to take. I want you to put him on an altar and I want you to sacrifice him to me. And Abraham believed God and he took his son, his only son. The only way that all his promises of God could happen, he went and he placed him on that altar. He didn't do what most of us would do. He didn't say, now this can't be right. God said that he was going to make me a father of many nations. If I kill my son, how am I going to be a father of many nations? God said that through me, the world would be blessed. The Messiah would come forth. If I kill my son, how is that going to happen? He didn't question God. He didn't come up with excuses. He didn't come up with reason. He did what God said because Abraham believed God. Now, I'm going to ask you again. Probably the biggest majority of us even sitting here don't believe God the way that Abraham said that he believed God. Help us, Lord. When you believe God, it's not just a head thing. It's a feet thing. It's a hand thing. It's a mouth thing. It's everything that you are believes God and acts on that belief. Abraham believed God, and we should believe God too. There was a man named Jonah. Everybody knows about Jonah. Everybody knows the account of Jonah. God called Jonah and he said, I want you to go to Nineveh, and I want you to preach. And we all know that Jonah did not go to Nineveh. Jonah jumped on this ship and he went in another direction. Why did Jonah do that? Because he had decided, he had thought, that the Ninevites are a bunch of heathens and they ain't worth anything and it's a waste of my time to go down there and to preach to them and I really don't believe in my heart of hearts that God would send me to a bunch of ungodly heathens and waste my time. So he got on this boat and he began to go the other way. I'm going to tell you something. There are people sitting here this morning. God has told you, I want you to go over there. It was easier to go over there. So you went over there instead of going over there. What happened? 
happened to Jonah when he got on the boat, when he took the easy way. He got caught up in a storm. There are people sitting here this morning that have been and are right now caught up in a storm because you didn't go the direction that God told you to go. You went the easy way. It looked good. It looked promising. It was an easy thing to do. It was easy to tell yourself, this just feels right. This just feels good. Everything's in place, so it must be the will of God. So I'm going to get on the boat, and instead of going over there, I'm going to go over there. But what happened to Jonah when he got on that boat, and he started to go the easy way? There was a storm. It came up, and it rocked, and it tossed that boat, and it threatened the lives of everybody on that boat. I'm going to tell you something. You get on that boat, and you go the easy way. You're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting all those around you, right. those that are on the boat with you. You're affecting them also, and it ain't going to be too very long. They're going to begin to look around, and they're going to be to say, who caused this problem? And they may not come right out like them sailors did and pick you up and throw you overboard. But I want to ask you this. Don't ask me why God gives me these things. Whoever this is for, you know why God gave me this. I want you to ask this. When you got on that boat, you went the easy way because it looked good. You went the easy way because everything was just in place. It had to be the will of God. I feel good about it. And it's going to work. So you went that way. And it was good, smooth sailing for a little while. But then it started getting a little rough. The water started getting a little choppy. And then it began to pick up. The wind began to blow. And the boat began to be tall. And it was looking not too good anymore. And then all of a sudden, all those people around you, their attitude changed. Mm -hmm. What happened? You went the wrong way. You didn't heed the voice of the Spirit. You didn't heed the voice of the God. Whoever you are, if you think back before you got on that boat, before you went that easy way, there might have been one voice, one small voice that was easy to overlook that said, you probably shouldn't do that. You probably shouldn't go that direction. You probably shouldn't get on that boat. But it was easy to ignore that one because the loud voices and the multitude of voices and the situation and the circumstance and how you felt led you to go the other way. I'm going to tell you something, and this may be the message next week. God keeps laying it on me like this. We need to learn to discern the voice of God. We need to hear what it is that God is saying so many times. We want to give God's voice to everybody around us. We want to give God's voice to how I feel. We want to give God's voice to situation, to circumstance. I've heard it so often. Well, if God opened the door, he must want me to go through it. How do you know God opened it? You don't know who was on the other side of that door until you cross the threshold. You better learn to listen and hear and understand who it is that's speaking to you. We're so quick to jump. We're so quick to just go because it feels right, because it looks right, because it's smooth, because it's easy. And I gotta say this again, just because it's smooth, just because it's easy, just because it feels good, don't mean it's of God. That's right, that's right. I want you to look back in this word. I want you to really think about the old men of God. Most everything they did was hard. Amen. Most everything they did, they fought a battle to Amen. do. They had a, a multitude against them. Yeah. They, they were oppressed. They were downtrodden. They were jailed. They were run out of town. Most everything they did at the heeding of the voice of God was not easy. It Amen. didn't feel good. Every situation and circumstance wasn't right. It wasn't a smooth road, but it was where God sent them. So I want you to get the idea out of your head that because it's easy and because it looks good and because every step looks like it's ordered, don't mean it's God. I've been there. You go where God hasn't sent you. You do what you think you are to do, and it's not of God. 
you're going to be a miserable somebody. That's right. That's right. And you are never going to find peace until you get back in the will of God. And just like Jonah, you got in that boat. You ended up in a storm. All the people around you begin to change. They weren't such nice people anymore. Their attitude changed. And you ended up going overboard. Come on. And here you are now. You're in the belly of a whale. Not a very nice place to be. It's not a comfortable place to be. It stinks. Literally and figuratively, it stinks. But you know what? In there, there's no distractions. You can begin to think. You can begin to listen. You can begin to remember. You remember when Jonah was in that whale? What did he do? He turned his face to God. And he began to cry out to God. He remembered from whence he had come. He remembered who it was who was in charge, who it was that was given the directions. And he prayed. He poured his heart out to God. Now let me ask you something. Had the storm not come and he stayed on the boat and he made it to where he was going, do you think he would have done that? I don't think so. Sometimes God has got to rock your world. Sometimes God has got to rock your boat. Sometimes he's got to pitch you overboard, let you end up in the stinking place so that you stop and realize who it is that is in control, who it is that is in charge, who it is that directs your path, who it is that has determined where you are to be and what you are to do. We've got to remember that sometimes. i got to say this again. It is so easy. It, it, it is just so easy when everything looks nice to say that's got to be of God. Get that out of your head. Come on. I'm going to tell you something. In this world, you will have tribulation. If you're serving God, if you're in His will, if you're really doing what He wants you to do, going where He wants you to go, being what He wants you to be, it ain't going to be an easy thing. That's right. It's going to be a little rough. Jonah got tossed overboard because he went to the wrong place. He went in the wrong direction. And he got caught in a storm. And if you do that, you go to the wrong place, you go to the wrong direction. I don't care how many more tubes told you it was right. I don't care how good it felt. I don't care if it looked like it was just set up perfect for you to go there. If you went where God didn't say to go, you're going to end up in a storm. The attitude of those around you is going to change. You're going overboard. You're going to end up in a stinking place. And once you realize that, and you turn your heart to God, and you begin to cry out to God, and you begin to plead with God. He may deliver you like he delivered Jonah. Jonah was plurfed up on that land, back up on that shore. He was out of that stinking place. Now here he was and he had a decision to make again. He was between this and this. Now what's he going to do? He decided he would go ahead and do what God told him to do. And he went and he went to Nineveh and he preached to them and he didn't like it. He didn't want to do it. He, he wanted them Ninevites to be destroyed but he did what God told him to do and because he did Nineveh was saved uh, I don't remember the number thousands upon thousands of people were saved because he did what God told him to do you may not like what God wants you to do you may not be on board with it. It may not be what you think it ought to be. You might not be going and doing what you think your calling was or what you think you are suited to or what you think your talent is. But if you follow God, there will be a good result. There will be something that will happen just like Jonah went ahead and did it and Nineveh was saved. Even though he didn't want to do it, he didn't like doing it, he did it and Nineveh was saved. Even if you don't think that's what you want to do, that's what you're suited you want to be, if it's where God said go, if it's what God said do, God will reap a benefit from it. Amen. Amen. We have to learn to discern. We've got to understand the voice of God. We've got to know who it is that is speaking to us and who it is that is directing us 
And as I said, I don't think a lot of Christians do. I really don't. I've heard so many say, I've been there myself. Well, everything just fell right in place. It's got to be God. Well, the door just opened. It's got to be God. This is something I wanted to do. Here all of a sudden this person comes and says to me, why don't you do this? It's got to be God. No, it don't. It don't. You better make sure it's God. And I'm going to say it again. A lot of time when it is of God, it ain't easy. It's a hard thing. It's not really what you wanted to do. It's not really where you wanted to go. It's not the job that you wanted. It's not easy a lot of time. But it is what God wants. And if we do that, if we are obedient, if we follow the voice, the leading, the will of God, there will be a benefit. And I can tell you from my own experience, even when I stepped out and I've done what I didn't want to do, I would rather have been doing something else, but I knew God wanted me to do this. And when I stepped out and I did it, even though I didn't want to do it, things began to happen. God began to work. God began to move. And it wasn't too very long that I was extremely glad I had done what God wanted me to do. And I began to be blessed by it. And I began to be encouraged by it. And I began to be happy that I finally was obedient to the will of God. Even though I had to get out of that stinky place first. Even though I had to go through all that other stuff. Once I finally listened to God, it was a good thing for me. It was a good thing for those around me. It was a good thing for the kingdom of God. We must be and do what God says, or it will not accomplish anything. It will be a detriment. It will hinder the work of God. It will not benefit the work of God. It's that old saying, everything that glitters is not gold. That's right. That's right. It might be shiny, and it might look good, and it might feel good at the moment, and it may seem like everything's just perfect and in place. Until you get there. Then it's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say this again. If you've been in that situation, or maybe you're in it now, I want you to think back. I really want you to think back. There was a point where there was at least one voice that said, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go that direction. But we just... Ten voices are saying, do it. The door is open. The path is laid. They've strewn roses for me to walk on. It's so easy and comfortable. It has to be of God. And you got this one voice behind you saying, don't do it. What do they know? And off you go. You need to learn to discern the voice of God. And the voice of God is usually not loud. It's not a bullhorn. It's not a megaphone. It's not a booming voice from heaven. It's usually a single, solitary, still, small voice. Whether it's through a person, whether it's through a message, whether it's through in your mind, in your heart, whatever way, it's usually not the big, booming voice. It's not the situation. It's not the circumstance. It's not all these other things. It's just that still, small voice. I want you to go in your Bible and you find it and you show it to me where God led anybody through situation and circumstance. You go back and you look at the old prophets and show me one that God led through situation and circumstance. He spoke to them. He directed them. He guided them. And they listened. If they would have listened to the majority, if they would have went the way that looked good and felt good and looked easy and they were convinced would work, they wouldn't have done what God had them to do. I want you to listen to something. The book of Acts chapter 21. I'm going to jump around here. This is Paul. And it's talking about when Paul came and he was having some issues, he had all of his problems, and then he was getting ready to go on 
and, and continue his journey. Uh, you read this when you get the chance. There are just a couple of things I want to bring out. In the book of Acts 21, verse 10, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. I want you to notice this first. God sent a man of God to Paul. It said this man was a prophet, and God sent him down from Judea. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So thou the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentile. God sent a man. This was a man of God. This was a man that they knew was a man of God that was speaking the man for God and had been given a message by God. And what did this man say? He said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. And that's the voice that we need to listen to. God sent the message. God sent the man to Paul. And that man came and he spoke in the power and in the anointing and in the authority of the Holy Ghost and said, This is what the Holy Ghost said. That's where you need to get your direction from. You listen to what is sent from God, by God, through whoever he chooses, through a man of God, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you listen to that message and listen to what he has to say. And listen to what he said. Thus said the Holy Ghost. And he told him, the owner of this girdle is going to be bound and delivered. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. The message came from God to Paul and said to him, Paul, you're going to be bound by the people where you're going. You're going to be bound and you're going to be delivered up and you're going to be jailed and all these terrible things are going to happen to you. And what did the church say? Don't do it. Don't do it. Stay here. God wouldn't have you do that. God wouldn't have you go into something like that. God's too nice for that. You stay here where it's comfortable. We all love you, and we all care about you, and we want to get squishy-wishy with you. You just stay here where we're at. Don't go up. Don't listen to him. I'm telling you something. You better heed the voice of the Spirit. You better heed the voice of God. I don't care how good it feels here. It's not going to feel good for very long if you're disobedient to God. That's right. That's right. Amen. You better heed the voice of the man of God who comes in the power of the Spirit and speaks the word of God and you better do what he says to do no matter how bad it sounds, no matter how rough it sounds, you better do what God says to do. But so many of us are so quick. We and they of that place besought him not to go. We began to listen. There was one man that said to go. But he said, we and the people of that place there was a multitude that said, don't do it. Don't go, Paul. You need to stay here. God wouldn't have you go here. God wants you here. God wouldn't have you go through all that. God wants you to have a good and easy and night. You better just stay here. And so quick, we will listen to that. When one voice says no, and billions or thousands or hundreds or even ten say, no, don't do that, do this. We're so quick to listen to that. We've got it stuck in our head somewhere that it has to be of God if it's nice. It has to be of God if it's comfortable. It has to be of God if it's good. It has to be of God if the multitude says so. It's usually not that way. It's usually the other way around. The prophet came and said, the Holy Ghost said, you're going to be bound and delivered into the hands of the Gentiles. And the people said, don't go, Paul. Don't go. That's not of God. You need to stay here with us. This is where God will have you to be. Look how nice it is. Look how comfortable it is. And he goes on, Paul answered, okay, I'll stay. That's what most of us do. You're right. It's got to be God. 10, 15 of you are saying this, and that one crazy guy over there, he's saying something else. I'm going to listen to you guys. That's what we do. But what did Paul say? Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? I am ready. Not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 
thank you, Jesus. That's how we need to be. I'm ready to get a little uncomfortable. I'm ready to make a move. I'm ready to do what God would have me to do. I want to be where God wants me to be. I want to say what God wants me to say. I want the job that God wants me to have. I am ready, no matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how rough the road, no matter what other people think, no matter what other people say, I am ready to do what God would have me to do. What if Paul had not done that? What if he had listened to the majority and stayed where he was? We would not have the books that Paul wrote. We would not have all the things that Paul did. How do we know what would have come about? How do you know what may not happen if you are not obedient to God? You have no idea what God wants you to do with you. You have no idea what you may be able to accomplish through Christ. You may sit there and say, not me. I'm nobody. I can't do this and I can't do that. No, you can't. But God can if you are obedient and if you are willing and you follow his direction and you go where he says go. You speak what he says speak and you be who he says be. God can accomplish things through you, but you got to learn to discern the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Quit listening to the crowd. Quit listening to the multitude. Quit listening to situation. Quit listening to circumstance. Quit listening to your fleshly comfort. The things you want and begin to hear the voice of God and do what God said to do. He goes on here talking about Paul. And verse 17 it said, and following, he was arrested and he was bound. And in verse 22, bear with me here, follow along. He says, What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say. We need a crowd. We need a group of people. The multitude must come together. We must get some people together. And in order to do that, you got to do what we say. You got to act how we act. You got to be where we say to be. You got to speak what we say to be. And we are so quick to do that, so quick to follow that, so quick to listen to that, just because they're church people, just because they're Christian, don't mean they're directing you in the right direction, don't mean they're pointing you to where God wants to point you, the only way you're ever going to be sure, the only way you're ever going to be guaranteed is if you listen to that voice of God, if you listen to that Holy Spirit that is telling you where to go and what to do, what did they want Paul to do, listen to this. Do therefore this that, that we say. We have four men which have a vow on them. Take and purify thyself with them and go through this ritual with them. You got to do it our way. It's not going to work any other way. We want the crowd to see that you're on board with us. We want the crowd to see that you're just like us. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to start doing things our way. That's what they want Paul to do. And we got these four guys that are going to go through this ritual. You go through it with them. Then everybody will think you're on board. Everybody will think you're one of us. Hey, and listen, even Paul fell into that. He goes on and he says, Then Paul took the men, and the next day purifying himself with them, entered into the temple. He got on board with it. He went ahead and did what they did. He went ahead and followed their direction. And a lot of times we will do that when the church, when the other Christian, when the crowd is saying, Come on, get on board. We got to do it this way. You got to make sure they know you're part of us. You got to follow it the way that we say to follow it. And we will do that. Even Paul did that. Yeah, but listen to what happened in verse 27 when they saw him in the temple stirred up all the people and they laid hands on him it didn't work out the way they intended not what they wanted to happen happened they thought if Paul did it their way if he followed their direction then all the multitude would be happy all the multitude would be on board everything would be good but it went just the opposite when they saw Paul do it what did they do they got stirred up they got upset. They got angry and they laid hands on him. And I'm going to tell you something. If you begin to do things just because the church 
does things, just because that pastor does things, just because the crowd says do it this way. If you begin to do them that way, it ain't going to be too very long. Somebody's going to lay hands on you.